must all deal with fear. This is something that uh, every person has to deal with. Something you have to deal with. It's not, it's, it's not an option. Fear is not something that only certain people have or only certain people deal with. Fear is something that everybody deals with, but there are some people who have more fear, fear or have a greater uh, battle with fear than others. There are some people who have a greater battle with fear than others, but everybody deals with fear, yeah. okay? And so I want to use uh, fear as my topic today because in Bible study we, uh, we studied the um, righteousness and what righteousness was and, and, and righteousness is uh, the opposite almost of, of, of what fear is. And so I want to show you some things in the scripture. So if you have your Bibles, let's go to the book of Romans, um, the 8th chapter, verse number 15. Uh, if you need a Bible, raise your hand and we'll get one to you. Uh, but once again, we're talking uh, from the topic of fear. The topic of fear. Let me give you the definition, the definition of the word fear. Uh, fear, a painful emotion or passion excited by an expectation of evil or danger. So the definition of fear is a emotion or passion that has been excited or made alive, riled up, stirred up because of danger or evil. You think something bad is going to happen. So you get afraid. The dog run out into the street while you're walking. You get afraid. The definition says that it is an emotion, a passion that has been stirred, that has been riled, that has been excited by something or somebody. And so the illustration that the definition is giving us here is that fear is always there. It's always there. It is an underlying thing. In every person, that's the definition that the, the uh, or that's the illustration that the definition is giving. That fear lies in everyone. And that there are certain times when fear is riled up or excited or stirred up and brought to the forefront. But it's always been there. Mm -hmm. So for an example, uh, I gave, I talked about the dog. You're walking down the sidewalk and somebody's dog is loose. The dog comes out at you and you get afraid. You become afraid. Now, that fear was always there. You just had no reason to feel it until the dog presented danger. And so the danger that the dog presents calls what's always been in you to be stirred up and riled up and now it comes to the forefront and some people because of fear will freeze. Mm -hmm. Some people because of fear will run. Yeah. Some people because of fear will um, um, get a weapon or look for something to fight the dog off. Many different responses can happen but all of these responses are triggered by fear. Some people want to run, some people want to fight. But the trigger is fear. That's what I want to deal with today. I want to deal with fear. Because the same fear that comes on you when the dog comes out is the same spirit of fear that comes on you when the doctor says you're sick. Or when the doc or when the bill comes in the mail and it says you got to pay such and such amount of money and you don't know how you're going to pay that money, it's the same spirit of fear that has been round up in you. And if you're not careful, that spirit of fear will enable you. It will literally neutralize you as a Christian. It will render you the same spirit of fear that will make you stop and get bit by the dog because you can't move, you're afraid. It's the same spirit of fear that will make you start crying and doubt God and believe that there's no way out of that situation. Same spirit of fear. Yeah. Same spirit of fear. So my, my, my goal today is to show you how to deal with fear and to show you where fear comes from. Mm -hmm. All right. We're going to start off 
in the book of Romans. We're going to start off in the eighth chapter of Romans. We're going to take a look at what the Bible gives us concerning fear. All right. Uh, Romans, the eighth chapter, go down to verse number 15. The Bible says, For we have not received, it's talking to the Christians now, uh, for the Christian have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear. But ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry our Father. So he talks about having not received again. Again is in reference to there was something there before. So he's letting us know that there was one time as a Christian, or before we became Christians, that the spirit of fear was a part of our makeup. It was a part of who we were. Fear was a part of who we were before we were the people of God. Before you were born again, fear was a part of your makeup. It was a part of your philosophy, a part of your way of thinking. It was a part of the way you dealt with life. And I'm going to show you later that it had a, it, it had a reason to be a part of your life. It should have been a part of your life. If you're not saved, let me just throw this out here. I'm jumping the gun, but I'm going to throw it out here. If you're not saved, you should be afraid. Anybody who is not born again, anybody who is not righteous, have a reason to be afraid. You should be afraid. You should be scared. You should be in terror. You should be living a life of fear, a life of terror, a life of, 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 of misery, because you are under the condemnation of God. to fear. It causes you to move a 
a certain way. It causes you to, 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 to behave a certain way. It causes you to sleep back into a certain mind frame whenever you get afraid. There is a bondage, there is a slavery that is attached to uh, fear that you have to be very careful of as a Christian because it has no part in your life. He says you did not, you, you have not been begotten again to this fear. You have not received this spirit of fear again unto bondage, but you have received something else. Mm -hmm. He says you have received the spirit of adoption. Adoption means you have been made a child of God. And so now it is the spirit that lives in you, and by that spirit we cry, Abba, Father, yeah. my dear Father. And so fear has no uh, longer any place in the life of a Christian because we have received a different spirit. Yeah. He said you didn't receive the spirit of fear. The world has the spirit of fear. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you uh, something that's about fear. Fear is a learned behavior. Okay, fear is a learned behavior. You gotta understand this. I'm gonna give you. I'm gonna, give, I'm gonna back it up. Just but get it down first. Fear is a learned behavior. When you are born, you are born fearless. You are born without fear. You have to teach a child to be afraid of water. Yeah. Because a baby will see a pool and run right in there and jump in the water and can't swim a lick. Yeah. You have to teach a child, don't play with the um, plug on the wall. Mm -hmm. Because a baby will walk right up to the plug and put their finger in the plug. You have to teach a child what not to eat or where not to go. You have to teach a child how to cross the street and how to look both ways. Because a child will walk right out there. You have to teach a child how to be afraid because fear is not normally a part of you. Amen. Everything that you are afraid of, you are afraid of it because you learn how to be afraid. Mm -hmm. You are afraid because somebody taught you how to be. You, well, you, have you ever see somebody who, uh, um, who's always jumping? <laughs> somebody reached out, wave, and wave at you, move quick by you, and they jump? Yeah. They jump because somebody did to them. And based on their past experience, they have learned how to be afraid. They've learned how to be afraid. They've learned how to be weary. They've learned how to be cautious. They've learned how to be on God. They've learned how to be untrusting because life has taught them that. Now, there are times in life where you need to be on guard and you need to be cautious you need to be have your wits about you. Mm -hmm. that, that, that we can have wisdom in certain situations. That's not what I'm dealing with today. What I'm dealing with today is fear. Mm -hmm. Because the Bible says that there is a terror connected to fear. Mm -hmm. See, fear does not all only deal with what's going to happen. See, it doesn't just mess you up because you're worried about what's going to happen in the future. That's a part of fear. But fear also messes you up right now because whenever you are afraid, you're not just worried about the future, but in the moment you have been robbed of your peace. Yes. So not only is it causing trouble about your future, it's causing trouble about right now because you've lost your peace, you've lost your joy, you feel sorrowful, you feel burdened down, you feel worried, you feel full of anxiety. And so not only is there trouble in the future, but it's trouble now. Yes. Fear robs me of my identity with Jesus. Mm -hmm. It robs me of the peace that Christ came to give me. It robs me of the joy that Christ came to give me. It is a robber of the righteous. Yes. Fear is a thief to the righteous. To the world, it's supposed to be there. Yes. You're supposed to be afraid. If there's anybody who should be afraid, it's somebody who's still in their sins. But for us who have been redeemed, who have been blood washed, there is nothing we should be afraid about. Hello. Number one, fear is a learned emotion. Don't take what you learn in the world that has established fear in your heart to come into the body of Christ and keep you afraid. Because what you were afraid of in the world does not have authority or jurisdiction over you now that you're in the kingdom. If you was afraid of death in the world, now that you're in the kingdom, you don't have to be afraid of death because death has been conquered on your behalf. Yeah. Death has been conquered. Death is no longer ruling in your life because Jesus died and conquered death. And for the righteous, there is no death. All right. All right. So there is no reason for you to be afraid of death because for the righteous, we don't die. Right. Amen. Amen. We don't die. Yeah. So there's no reason. Why are you afraid of death if you cannot die? Okay. Okay, let me give you something else. Number one, fear is a learned 
behavior. Number two, fear is not of God. Fear is not of God. That's why the Bible said, I just read the scripture to you, um, Romans the 8th chapter, verse number 15. He says, you did not receive from me a spirit of fear. So anytime, listen to this, and I don't care what it is, anytime you find yourself afraid, you automatically know that that fear did not come from God. You got to make this a broad decision. This has to be a, 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 a closed debate. Anytime Corey finds himself afraid, whether it be because of a bad doctor's report, whether it be because of a money issue, whether it be because of a hurricane they say is coming to pump and over, it doesn't matter the reason you find. It can be a dog coming up the sidewalk. You don't have no business being afraid. Amen. Thank you. Fear has no place in your life because the dog is subject to you. That's what the Bible says. You have the authority to speak to the dog. Yeah. Fear does not have any place in the life of the righteous. It comes to us to rob us of our inheritance because fear and faith cannot coexist. So anytime you are afraid, that means faith is no longer there. Mm. This is why the devil sends messages and sends um, uh, um, uh, things your way to create an atmosphere of fear. That's what he wants to do. Because whenever he's able to create an atmosphere, let me, let me, let me slow down a little bit here and give you some understanding. You get a phone call. You was okay with no problems. Going good, the day was good. You get a phone call that gives you bad news. Your first emotion is fear. Yes. Because fear has it, it was always there because you never dealt with it. It was there ever since you was raised in the world. You brought it into the body of Christ. It didn't come in the body of Christ. You brought it into the body of Christ because you came from the world. Yes. And the world lives in fear. Mm -hmm. They live in terror. They live in dread. And so you came into the body of Christ and never learned or was never taught to get rid of fear. And so now the fear has been dormant all this time. You get a bad phone call and it arouses the fear that's always been there. And so now because of what you heard, you are afraid. Mm. Right. You have a response now yes. that is completely contrary to everything the word of God teaches you. Uh -huh. Because you have been carrying something that you didn't even realize you was carrying. Mm. You thought it was just a part of life. But I'm here to tell you that it's not a part of your life. Amen. It's not a part of the life of the righteousness, Amen. of the righteous people, because fear don't belong to us. Let's go to Proverbs 28 chapter. Proverbs 28. I'm trying to give you this in, in a sequence so that you can better understand it, but I'm fighting myself because I just want to say it. But I, I'm trying to build it for you so that you can walk out of here with a good understanding of this issue of fear. Because fear, this it is, will rob you of what's yours. Because anytime fear comes into the house, faith is not there. Well, You cannot fight the devil with your hands. How do you fight an enemy that you can't touch? Right. How do you fight an enemy? How do you fight a bad doctor's report? How do you fight a bill with final note? How do you fight an enemy you can't touch? You fight him by faith. Yes. The Bible says we resist him steadfast in the faith. Mm -hmm. yeah. How do we fight the enemy that we can't touch? We fight him by faith. Faith is the opposite of fear. Fear comes to rob me of my faith because if I'm wrong, for me. Anytime my faith has been snatched away from me, I no longer have any good expectation. All right. That's the that's the ma very manifestation of fear. Is that the good expectation is gone. Okay. And all I see now is a bad expectation. My and 